friends, thank you so much for all your support to Neelgar. Uh, a lot of friends have a lot of clients' friends have recently approached me that I must make an educated video, which talks about Bandini and digitalization <laughs> and uh, and block printing, uh, because Bandini was done in block prints historically, and there's a it's it's a very interesting thing why. Uh, so let me give you a brief idea about. Um, how I started working because that, that is how you get to know the whole story. I finished my course of fashion designing in 1996 and I went to Kutch for the first time in 1998 and that was the first village uh, I visited, like in one, of the, one of the villages in Kutch and I was amazed by the identity. Um, I mean, every community has a, had an identity. They all wear very specific, they all used to wear very specific costumes, clothes, which had uh, very special designs, prints, and each person in the same community would wear exactly the same thing. And here, for example, are some of the some of those fabrics which I saw there and I collected in those times, which are very which have become very rare now to find. This is a block printed version which was worn by a particular community in Kutch. And this was a community where everybody was supposed to wear bandhani and of course they could not afford to wear bandhani every single day. But on a special occasion like a wedding they would wear a bandhani and look at this bandhani and look at how tiny and how close the dots are. If I try to hold one dot it's impossible to hold the second one but somebody did and somebody actually tied it. Look at how, so when you say bandhani is fine, it's not just the fineness of the dots, but also how close they are, and look at the, how close they are. And a piece like this takes eight months to make. And of course it costs a lot. So a milkman who was getting it made for his daughter was actually paying six months of milk to this bandhani maker. So imagine how important these things were to people, how, how close to their hearts they were. Now, what happened was that in around 2000, because till then I was experimenting a lot with block printing, with uh, shiboris, with laharias, with different things. And then around 2000, I went, uh, just before 2000, I went with a couple of uh, foreigners to, uh, to an antique dealer in Kutch, like we were going around Kutch, and, and this antique dealer showed us these pieces. And look at how tiny they are. And this is actually handmade. This is not digital printed. Uh, and it's impossible to imagine how or who tied it so tiny, so fine. Uh, but this is definitely an antique. And, uh, and when I saw these, I thought, oh my God, who was making these? Where are those people? I want to kiss their hands. But I was told that those people don't exist anymore. And I said, no, I have to find somebody. And luckily, I found eight people. I started doing a project with the Ministry of Textiles trying to revive uh, the super fine quality of Pandanese. And around that time, we found eight wonderful women who continued to work with me for years. Uh, but due to the earthquake, we kind of lost touch with some of them. And um, some of them still are around. And now we work with around 1,500 of those women, uh, of course, after 20 years. But each of those 1,500 women doesn't do super crazy fine bandhani, but many do. And this, of course, is a piece which is made now. Now, what is the difference between the, the different pieces? So, for example, let's look at this. This is very big dot, and you have looked at this picture in the last few days. Why is it important? It's just a big dot. But do you see how defined it is? How perfect each dot is? And when you try to tie it, how, how will you get this exactly defined pattern in each dot? So you have to make a pattern, a paper pattern printed, and then you have to tie it. And you need a different kind of expertise to get this. But let me show you something else. Now this is something called double dot. You see two dots, and that is my double dot. So first the white is tied. And then the whole piece is dyed red in color. And then we dye the red part. So once the red part is dyed, we discharge the red part. And then we dye the beige. So these people are totally different again. Now a piece like this, for example, we have double dot as well as single dots. 
Now these are tied by a different person and these are tied by a different person. So this piece actually goes to two different hands to be made. Now here is again a different kind of dot and this is a very very Japanese way of doing it and a kind of shibori. Now again when we talk shibori we talk about stitch resist in India. Stitch resist is one of the techniques in shibori. All of these techniques that you're looking at are shibori. Batik is shibori. Lehariya is shibori. According to the Japanese there is no one technique which is shibori. There are hundreds of techniques all resist techniques come under the category of shibori and each has a different name. So here it is and you can see that they, they again have a very special shape if we compare with any of these. Now let's look at this piece. Here what we have done is we have done a kind of transition of dots. So over here the dots are at a gap. But as we go down, the dots get closer, and here they are much more closer, as you see here. These upper ones are tied by a different person, these are tied by a different person, and these are tied by a different person. Because you need different kind of expertise to tie these kind of gaps also. So that is, again, a very important thing in bundling. Now these are things which I started doing for the very, very... Uh, majorly for the European market because for almost 15 years I worked majorly internationally and I fo started focusing on the Indian market in the last say five years and look at the size of these dots look at how tiny they are and look at the perfect gapping between all of these dots And then look at these dots. This is almost like a half dot, not even a full dot. And look at how defined and perfect they are. Each of those things is so important in getting the quality of the patta like this could easily take six months. And why does it take so long to make? Because this is what we do. This is called nakhalia. It could be like it could look like this or it could look like this. So nakhalia is almost like an extended nail which means this is a point which is used to pick up the points. Let me not use this, I'm not used to this, but let me use this. And this is bungri. Now, it's just a pipe from which the thread is passed. If you use a different color so you can see the thread. Now, all we have to do is, this is to pick up the point. Once the point is picked up, we use this thread to tie a knot and instead of moving my fingers constantly I'm going to move this bungri and it's got entangled <laughs> so let me just show you this way quickly So imagine this, and I have not even finished one dot, and this entire piece might have hundreds of dots, and this piece might have thousands of dots. So every day to do that movement continuously, a woman cannot do it for hours and hours because she's not a machine. It's a hand. So maximum a day that a woman who does this kind of tiny work does uh, works is half an hour, one hour, two hours it's impossible to work beyond that like when it is super urgent and there's a lot of wonderful clients call me and say i want it within so many days i'm like how do i convince that woman to work for more than two hours in a day it's not going to happen she also has to do all her other other jobs in between she has to look after the kids manage the house so this is what i wanted to talk about i hope this is interesting enough and if you have more questions please contact us